the shows that a lot of us are probably comparing ourselves to, they probably are the anomalies. They're probably the shows that were at the right place at the right time, or they've been doing it for a lot longer than you, you think. They already had a social media following. They got some really good shout outs. Podcast Growth Nation, welcome back to another very special episode of Podcast Growth University, where we talk all things podcasting all the time. I hope you enjoyed the latest episode, episode number 18, why you should give stuff away for free. One of my favorite episodes, honestly, and something that I talk about every single day when I do free calls with various human beings, various podcasters, various coaches. Today for episode number 19, the truth about podcast growth. So the reason I wanted to do this episode, I recently started with a new client and this, this client is great. This is nothing against the client, but somebody at some point in their journey told this client that they should go find somebody to quote unquote, promote their podcast. And it was kind of a red flag. It was a bit of an anomaly when I started my conversations with this potential client. One of the first things I said was, how many listens do you have? And this person said, well, right now I have roughly 150 episodes and I have 150,000 downloads. And immediately in my mind, something is off there. That, that is very rare. It, that is not the vast majority of people's experiences. So I started asking questions. I said, what have you been doing? what is working, what's not working. And he said, well, things really started to grow for me when I started paying somebody to promote my podcast. And I said, oh, okay. And we went through and this person, I don't really think they understood genuinely. I, I think they were very confused at what that meant, but this is what I said to the person. I understand you think you have that many downloads, but in reality, it's not close to that. You're paying for somebody to get you fake views, fake listens, probably fake reviews as well. I would cancel that immediately because that's not going to help you. That's not going to help the algorithm. It doesn't work that way. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that are happening. It's not real. Those aren't real listens. They're not real views. It's not real growth. And after that happened, I thought to myself, okay, number one, there's a lot of people out there that are probably purchasing views, thinking it's going to help them grow their show. Okay. Number two, a lot of people probably don't know where they are in the grand scheme of things. So I had a call with a client the other day and this client's getting like 300 downloads per episode, which in the grand scheme of things is really good. And I said that I said, you're the fact that you're getting anywhere from 250 to 350 downloads per episode. That's really good. And he said, Oh really? I didn't know that. So part two is I want everybody to understand through actual numbers. And I'm going to take you through our, my other show, Next Level You, I'll, I'll tell you how many downloads we have year to date. And then I have three other podcasts that are clients of ours that I'll take you through. Now, I'm not going to be specific to who they are because I want to respect their privacy and their data, but I am going to share the number that they have because I think contextually it adds value. So I want to start with this. Being in the industry now for five and a half years, I think maybe coming up on, it was April of 2017. So yeah five and a half years. The thing that I've seen that is more common now than it's ever been is people are just outright lying about the amount of downloads they have. And there's a couple of ways you can tell. So at one point there was I uh, I don't want to say a competitor, but there was somebody in the industry who does stuff similar to next level podcast solutions. And I was researching them and this person has a podcast. And when I researched this person's podcast, I saw on their social media that they were claiming to have certain episodes that had 250,000 downloads. And again, immediately there's red flags. There's anomalies going off in my brain. That doesn't make any sense. After researching and honestly, probably researching more than I should have, but I wanted to get the awareness. I realized very quickly, number one, the followers that this person has on their social media are definitely not real. 99% of the comments they have are also fake because when you look long enough, you start to see the trends. And based on that, I go and look at the podcast. If you're getting 250,000 downloads per episode, you're going to have more than 15 reviews or 20 reviews on your Apple podcast profile. That was an anomaly. It was a red flag, which to me 
99.99999% chance that that person's lying about their downloads, I would bet the house on it. But what happens is if you see that, that's going to affect the way you look at your own podcast. And you're going to say, well, that person's crushing it. They're getting a quarter million downloads per episode. Wow. I could never do that. That person's not doing it either. I'm really understanding now that number one, a lot of people are just outright lying. Number two, a lot of people are really good at making it. They're really good at making it look like they're crushing it. And they're really good at elevating their perception way beyond their current results. So my goal in this episode is to at least give you an understanding or a baseline of where most people actually are. And I don't want you to compare to people because you don't really know if their numbers are real. So the reason it's the truth about podcast growth, a couple things. One, much of the truth, quote unquote, that you're seeing is not real. Number two, it's like that on social media too. And number three, if you are comparing yourself to somebody else's inflated false numbers, it's not going to do you any favors. If anything, it's going to make you want to quit because you're going to say, wow, they just started and they already have X amount of listens and downloads and all this happy jazz. They're making all this money. I don't want that for you. So, oh, and the other thing too, let me, let me add this. Please, please, please be very, very careful with any of the paid ads you see. We guarantee we'll launch a top 100 show in two weeks or 30 days or your money back. Be very, very careful. I have launched at this point three or four top 100 shows, our, ours included. But this is what you need to understand. If you have a large following, it's not hard to launch a top 100 podcast. And all top 100 means is you're in the top 100 on a specific chart in a specific place in the world. So say you're in a self-improvement podcast. You're in the self-improvement category, which is under education. If you're in the top 100 in the United States, that means you're on the charts, the top 100 within that category. If you were to go to the Apple podcast app, you'd literally see your podcast when you search the top of the charts. But a lot of people are saying, well, we can get you these, these results. We can get you these results. Again, it's just like any other industry where people are trying to use your lack of awareness to make them money. They're not going to be able to, if you don't have a following, you don't have a name, you don't have a big social media presence, it's going to be very, very hard for them to launch a top 100 podcast with you. And this is another way to think about it. Nowadays, and I don't mean, I don't mean anything cynical when I say this, I just understand that most people don't have the awareness of this yet. There's a lot of people that are quote unquote, Amazon bestsellers when it comes to launching books. Understand this, it's not super challenging to become an Amazon best-selling author when you have the right launch strategy. You can have people review the book. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a super popular book. It could have been dropped in a very small industry at a very specific time when there was no other competition. So just be very careful of the accolades that you see because it doesn't necessarily mean what you think. It might not be as powerful or as meaningful as you think. So I want to throw that in there too, because again, at the end of the day, whether it's this podcast or our other podcast, I like to raise people's awareness because I don't like to see people getting taken advantage of it, especially when it's something that you're passionate about and you're trying to do good in the world and you stop because you assume you're losing when you're not. All right. So I'm going to go through four different podcasts. I will start with ours because that's the one I can talk most openly and honestly about because it's our show. So I'm happy to reveal the numbers with it. Okay. So as of today, the recording of this episode, it is November 3rd, 2022. So year to date uh, from January 1st, 2022 to November 3rd, 2022, we have 187,372 audio downloads. That doesn't count YouTube. I don't know how many we have on YouTube. Probably, I don't know, maybe 30,000 in, in this year. I have another podcast. And again, I'm not saying that to brag. I want you to see the discrepancy between what these shows are doing. And I'll give you an understanding on why it's actually happening. Second show, year to date from January 1st, 2022 to November 3rd, 2022, 11,915 downloads. Again, audio only. This show has a little over 200 episodes. Third show, this, ep uh, this show has, I think 
300 and coming up on 350 episodes. They have 31,678 downloads this year. And then there's another show that's only seven months old that has 1,080 downloads. You can see there's a big difference, right? 11,000, so you can say 12,000, 32,000, and 1,100. Why are they so different? Well, obviously the one that has 1,100 listens or 10, uh, 1,080, we'll just say 1,100, it's only been around for seven months. So it's new, that person's still building an audience, that person's not doing much more than just putting out a clip when the episode gets launched. There's not a lot of social media building. There's not a lot of relationship building. There's not a lot of going on other shows. They haven't really built the business out yet. This person's new. And right now, they're not in the place where that's their focus. They just want to be consistent and get content out there. That number reflects that, right? In the very beginning, our first year, I think we had 1,034. So although that person is doing, I won't say the bare minimum because they're, they're showing up and they're doing it, they're probably going to end up around 2,000 downloads in their first year, which is really good, all things considered. The first show that I talked about, the one or the second show, I talked about ours first, but the, the second show I talked about that has 11,915 downloads, that person is in their second year. Yeah, they're in their second year. So they're at the point now where they already are doing a Facebook group. They have coaching clients. They are doing speeches. They're going on other shows. They understand the importance of nurturing the audience. They're building their social media. They're building relationships on social media. They're doing a lot of the right things. And that's why that number is there. 11,000, 12,000 downloads in one year is really good, right? That's really, really good. And then that other show that I talked about that has 31,678, so I'll just say 32,000, that person is in a very niche category where there's not a ton of shows on this. This person is, I won't, yeah, they're more well-known. They're well-known in their area of expertise. They have a very high level of credibility and they have a lot of results in their life. So when this person talks, people are more likely to listen. They have a pretty decent social media following, nothing crazy, but definitely higher than average. Hey Kevin, Kim here. Just wanted to send you a video to say thank you so much for your help on creating the Peaceful Productivity Podcast. You know, I couldn't have done it without you. I knew you'd be lots of great help with the technical aspects of getting the podcast going, but you went well above and beyond that. You helped me with the strategy and you gave me all kinds of really great support. You know, I think the key to success in business is a great attitude and you have that in spades. You really walk the walk. So thanks again. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. So here's the thing. The person who's seven months in, although it's 1100 episodes, that's uh, sorry, 1100 downloads. That's a really good number considering the amount of effort they're putting in. The person who has 12,000 downloads, they're really starting to ignite the power of the compound effect now. And they're, they're doing a bunch of different stuff. They're doing a rebrand and they're, they're really up-leveling all that they're doing. The person who has 31,678, 32,000 downloads, that person is really in igniting the power of the compound effect because they've been around for longer. This is the interesting thing. In the beginning, I think we worry way too much about the numbers because we're assuming, oh, it's not growing fast enough. I don't have enough listeners. My, you know, my community sucks. I'm not getting good engagement. Understand that five years ago, we had 1,034 downloads in our first year. Now we have 187,372 in year five. But if we stopped it after year one, if we stopped after year two, that never would have happened. So we went from, and I don't know the exact numbers, but I know it was the first year, I think it was 1,034, 24, 27, something like that. I believe the next year was 28,000. We made so many changes after year one. And all of the changes, that's really what I've built this podcast on. So if we go back to, let's see, episode 11, how to turn your podcast into a business, that is huge. If you can take what I what I said in that episode and start turning that into common practices, you're going to be way ahead. 
the three buckets of podcast listeners, if you can understand every day, if I'm nurturing on social media, I'm going to be way more likely to win the top five mistakes podcasts are making. If you can go through there and avoid those, you're going to be in a good place. One simple reason you're not getting more downloads. That's a big one because you don't necessarily know what titles you're using. So there's a lot of ways to go with this. And I really want you to understand that if you're early in your journey, you're not going to have a lot of downloads. It doesn't mean you can't have a lot of downloads in the future. Don't compare your year one to my year five, especially considering we work very, very hard at what we do harder than most people are capable of working because it's our full-time job. I can put in 12 hours a day where if you have a job and this is your side hustle, you're not going to be able to do that. It's not sustainable for you. It might not be healthy for you. It might not be the right, the right direction for you. My goal in doing this episode was to raise your awareness to the fact that I just showed you four different podcasts and they all have different downloads, but they also all have different niches. They're in different categories. One of those shows drops once a week. One of those shows drops three times a week. One of those shows drops two times a week and our show drops seven times a week. Different frequency, different amount of episodes is going to determine how many downloads you get. That's a part of it. Different audiences, super important. Some of those clients aren't necessarily as good yet at titling their episodes because we're figuring out who their listeners are. That's important. But I want you to realize that the results not typical part of this is you can see none of those people are drastically above average. If you really, really think about it, the client that's going to have 1100 downloads in seven months, again, they're going to get to 2000 downloads this year. That's really good for what they're doing. The other two clients. So again, 12,000, that person will get to uh, maybe 20,000. And then the person who's 31,000, they'll probably end up getting to, you know, 50,000. Those are really good years. Those are really good years, but it's not their first year. That's really the point I want this to, to land for you. That's my goal in this episode is to make that point land. It's not year one. And if it was year one, those numbers would be drastically different. You'd be looking at the 2000 to maybe 10,000. If you're doing, if you're doing 2000 to 10,000 downloads in your first year, you're better off than you realize. That's, that's what I want you to take away. The truth about podcast growth is for the vast majority of us, including us in the beginning, it will be slow and it will take time. It's as much about what you're doing on the microphone as what you're doing after. Are you building relationships on social media? Again, I know we've talked about that in depth, but understand that you could be the best podcaster in the world. If you're not doing the other stuff, it's not really going to matter because how are people going to find your show? I want you to have a, a very clear understanding of where you fit in the grand scheme of things. And that's why I always ask people, how many downloads do you have? Because 12,000 downloads might not sound like a lot, but 12,000 downloads, there's plenty of opportunity for clients, right? There's, there's plenty of opportunity. Even the client who has 1100 downloads this year, that's, that's what we had in the first year. You're way ahead of where we were. You're going to almost double what we did. There's opportunity for monetization there too. There's opportunity to build a Facebook group. There's a lot of opportunity. So I want you to see these numbers and I don't want you to say, oh, wow, that's 11 times or 32 times what I have, whatever. I don't want you to say that. I want you to think to yourself, oh, okay. Now I have a higher understanding of where certain shows are. So if you're in a a comedy, say you're doing a comedy podcast, your number is going to be way different. If you're in a self-improvement industry, which all of the podcasts that we produce are pretty much, I can tell you that your number is going to be a lot different than if it was something like medical based or I don't know, true crime based. If you're doing something like that, your number is going to be way different. So understand this, the, the shows that really stand out, the shows that a lot of us are probably comparing ourselves to, they probably are the anomalies. They're probably the shows that were at the right place at the right time, or they've been doing it for a lot longer than you, you think. They already had a social media following. They got some really good shout outs. A lot, of, a lot of the growth that's out there isn't necessarily organic. 
and it's not typical to what you and I are going to be doing as podcasters. So I really wanted to, to do this episode from that frame. My goal is always to be transparent and take you behind the scenes and talk about what's real. Yeah, we're going to have a good year, right? We're going to have 250,000 downloads this year or something, but that never would have happened if we stopped after year one, if we stopped after year two. And this is something I'll say too. When you're further in your journey, okay? So think of it this way. Right now we have 1,150 episodes, we'll say. Tomorrow, say we get 3,000 downloads tomorrow. The vast majority of those downloads are gonna be on older episodes. Because if one person binges, there's a lot more content for them to consume. In the beginning, when you only have 50 episodes, there's not a lot of, I won't say virality, but it's hard to compound listens. Where for us, on a day where we have 1,500 downloads, people are going all the way back to single digits. So think of it. If we get one download on episode six, and then on seven, on eight, on nine, on 10, think of that. Think about how quickly those numbers add up. If there's 1,100 episodes and we get one listen on each episode, that's 1,100 downloads. So that's another part of this that you have to account for. If you only have 52 episodes after your first year, there's not a lot of compounding that can happen when people go to binge. So I want to throw that out there too. I think, I think that's an important, an important piece. So I was thinking next week, I was going to do an episode on the importance of how you name your episodes, but I think I already talked about that. So I don't know if I want to do that. This is what we'll do next week. Next week, we're going to do an episode on, and let me type it out because I will forget. I want to do an episode on how to figure out who's aligned as guests. And I don't know if that'll be the exact title. I'll, I'll probably make a better title. But one of the questions I get asked most often is, how do I get good guests? How do I figure out who's aligned? How do I know what they're going to talk about? How do I name my guest episodes? So I'll go into that. I'll talk about how to figure out who's aligned as guests, especially if you're early. Sometimes you got to take what you can get, and it's hard to get high-level guests, especially in the beginning. So I will talk about that. Also, big shout-out. I want to shout-out to Brianna. I did a free call yesterday with a listener of this show as well as Next Level University. It was wonderful. Shout out to Brianna doing good work in the world. Just started a podcast recently, crushing it. And uh, it was wonderful to to meet her. I appreciate the support. I am very, very, very grateful and overwhelmed with the amount of support we have for both shows. Again, this show is super new. I don't have a ton of downloads. I don't expect to have a ton of downloads, but I do know if I stay consistent in the grand scheme of things, things will really catch up. If you are interested in a free call, again, not going to try to sell you anything. I will take you through and I will go through your numbers, definitely, and we can talk about what's good, what's not. Let's go through and look at why are certain episodes crushing it, why are certain guests doing really well, why aren't certain episodes crushing it. We'll look in the data, and the data usually teaches us a lot about what's going on. Totally free. Link is in the show notes. I'm going to do them for as long as humanly possible. That's my goal. I love connecting with podcasters. I love adding value. So there. if you don't feel like right now is the, the time, don't worry. That link is not leaving anytime soon. Uh, my goal is to talk to as many of you as humanly possible. As I mentioned, next week we'll talk about figuring out who's aligned as guests. Thank you always for tuning in. I hope you are feeling good about your podcast. I hope this podcast about podcasting is adding value to your life. I hope it's bringing you clarity, inspiration, motivation, awareness, whatever it is that you need. And if you ever want to hear a specific topic, please do not hesitate to send me a DM at neverquitkid. I'd love to know what you're struggling with. The more I understand about what you're going through, the better everything will be. So that is my ultimate goal in the end. Podcast growth you. Thank you for another wonderful episode. Keep on podcasting and I will talk to you all next week.